Once a buyer has organized their financial affairs and secured the support of a top-notch lender, the next step is to differentiate themselves from the competition, i.e. other buyers. Since the real estate market can be highly competitive, it's essential to cover a few strategic advantages that can make all the difference in winning your dream home or losing it. There is a methodical approach to getting an offer accepted, consisting of a wide range of actions that increase the likelihood of success. Establishing a connection with the seller and listing agent is just one of those actions. We advise our clients to make themselves memorable by building rapport if the sellers are present during the property showing. We recommend introducing themselves, engaging in dialogue about the property, and sharing what they love about the home. Now, it's important to note that an agent's reputation and production level can also have a significant impact on the likelihood of getting an offer accepted, thanks to the Pareto Principle or 80-20 rule. Essentially, this means 20% of agents handle 80% of all transactions, and I would like to say it's even closer to 5% of agents handle 95% of all transactions. So what does this mean? The same 5% of agents regularly conduct business with each other. And if they have established goodwill and rapport, it can increase the chances of getting an offer accepted. That said, it's possible we come across an agent that we don't know. In this scenario, the buyer's agent should focus on establishing connections with the listing agent because it's crucial for the listing agent to be supportive of the buyer's offer when presenting it to the seller. As a buyer's agent, it's important to remember that the listing agent has a fiduciary duty to their client and cannot disclose any information without their client's consent. Therefore, we cannot directly ask the listing agent for the price the seller is willing to accept. However, we can ask indirect questions and observe the tone and response provided by the listing agent to obtain valuable information about the seller's expectations. For example, we might say something like, my clients are considering making an offer around 900,000. Do you think this would be competitive? Based on their response, we can continue asking additional indirect questions that allow us to gather very useful information and ultimately help us create a compelling offer. It's important to note that a competent buyer's agent does not approach this conversation without proper preparation. Before engaging in any conversation, the buyer's agent should conduct a comparable analysis on the property. Quick side note, comparables refer to homes that have similar features and are in the same or similar location as well as have been sold within a reasonable time frame. Agents and appraisers use comparables to determine the value of properties. It's important to have a general idea of value to be able to distinguish whether an agent is being truthful or misleading. For example, if the comparable analysis reveals that a property is listed above its comparables and the listing agent claims to have multiple offers, it could be a sign of dishonesty. Price, however, is just one factor to consider when buying a property. There are many other terms that can impact whether an offer is accepted or not, such as length of escrow, contingencies, appraisal removals, seller rent backs, and really the list continues on and on and on. Our objective is to have a comprehensive understanding of the seller situation through our communication with the listing agent to be able to develop a winning offer. Here's an example of how this could come into play. Suppose we discover that the seller is relocating out of the state and requires an additional seven days to move. In this case, it may be advantageous for us to propose a seven day rent back option to the seller to differentiate ourselves from the other offers. Lastly, it's essential to prepare a clean offer as a buyer's agent. Typically, an offer consists of four key elements. The residential purchase agreement, otherwise known as the RPA, proof of funds, pre-approval, and credit score. The RPA is a vital document that outlines critical information such as purchase price 
and other terms negotiated between the seller and buyer. This is the most crucial element of the offer and it requires careful attention. In a clean offer, this document is completely filled out and doesn't overstep on its request. You would be shocked to know most agents don't fill this out correctly. Yeah, shocking, right? In addition, a complete offer must also include the proof of funds, which can be in the form of a big statement, demonstrating that the buyer has the financial resources to purchase the property. The pre-approval letter from the lender is also necessary to demonstrate that the buyer qualifies for the loan. And finally, the credit score. A clean offer compiles all these necessary documents into a well-written email and sends it to the listing agent. Now, as a listing agent myself, a poorly constructed offer can indicate that the rest of the transaction could be equally as sloppy and problematic. It is crucial to remember that every detail in the offer can increase the likelihood of getting it accepted or not getting it accepted. And none of these details should be overlooked. <sighs> okay, congratulations for getting through our four part buyer series. Bear in mind that the knowledge required for buying a home can be overwhelming as I'm sure you've seen, similar to drinking water from a fire hose. Therefore, as I mentioned, it is so important to take it one step at a time. There's a lot more information to cover, but before we go any deeper, it's vital to obtain a deeper understanding of your actual situation. But before we do, I think it's important to be transparent upfront. Our team is selective when it comes to taking on new clients. We've learned that it's almost impossible to provide an outstanding level of service if we take on too many clients at the same time. The decision to take on new clients is based on several factors such as, but not limited to, cohesiveness, alignment of vision, compatibility. That said, it's important to express that price point is not one of those factors. Now, at this stage, we strongly recommend scheduling a brief 10 to 15 minute phone call with us to discuss your specific situation and determine if working together would be a good fit. Even if we decide not to partner up, we still wanna help by guiding you in the right direction. To schedule the call, click the message us button on step five. We're looking forward to hearing from you and learning a little bit more about your situation. Talk to you soon.